compliments of the season. Welcome to the news on the hours brought to you on the Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACN and Television. I am Rachel Ibun. Lagos Diocese celebrated its 100 years in a beautiful way with different activities with the theme Stronger, Deeper and Higher. The celebration which ended with a Thanksgiving and Eucharist service held at the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina Lagos, was attended by dignitaries like the former Defense Minister of Nigeria, General Teofilos Yakubu Danjuma, GCON, Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Odushola Shonwolu, and host of clergymen and their wives as led by the primate of all Nigeria, His Grace, the Most Reverend Nicholas Oku. The primate enjoyed the diocese of Lagos and laities in general to continue to support the Church of God and also prayed for God's shower of blessings upon the diocese. Every good and perfect gift is from where? From above. From above. The sun shines and distributes to the wicked as also to the good. So as you move out into the future, don't be tempted to continue to conserve and keep and keep. That will only turn you to a stagnant pool like the Dead Sea, which has no outlet. But when you reach out, when you minister, like he says, cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. God who gives is still giving and will continue to give. We appeal in the future that is ahead to our lay people to continue to sponsor the church without complaint. The Bible did not make provision that Muslims will come and build churches. They can support us if they are willing and we are grateful to them. But please, it is the responsibility of the Christian people to be happy to sponsor their church, to sponsor their clergy, to sponsor them in any project for today and tomorrow. Lagos Diocese, as God has set you up, he will not abandon you. No matter the challenges, be focused. Do not lose sight of the one who has called you. If you do not lose focus, the battle is the Lord's and he will take care of it. High point of the service was the award of living Episcopal legend of Lagos Diocese presented to the former Archbishop and Bishop of the Lagos Diocese, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Ephraim Adebola Ademo by the Diocesan Bishop of Lagos, the Right Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamisebi Olumakai, and the Thanksgiving proper. To present this award to you as a living legend, Episcopal legend of the Diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion. In the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. the season of the commemoration of the birth of Christ and to propagate the message of the gospel, the Anglican Youth Fellowship have taken evangelism to the Yumutu village in Apo district, Abuja, in what looks like an early Christmas gift for the community which lacks basic amenities like electricity, water, access road and others. ACN and TV news reporter Charles Philip Wakulam was there and has the full story. Yumutu village, a suburb of Apu district in Abuja, were elated and delighted as they got an early Christmas gift 
when the Anglican Youth Fellowship Diocese of Abuja paid a courtesy visit to the remote place to share the love of Christ. Yimutu village, which is very close to Kabusa district, can hardly boast of a constant water supply, has an abundant electricity project, a shambolic primary health clinic, poor access road and no school to the community. The major activity in this village is farming and they major in the cultivation of beans. Aru, naru buta. They have brought a ball over here that you can see a ball there. And uh, this ball, the, this light issue that has not yet complete, that is what the government have done. But still, they are still appeal for more, for more amenity to come inside here. And then the road, as I mentioned, they are still need of road from that Thai road to from Waru down here so that at least they can have access to carry their goods down to uh, the destination. What Yimitu is facing now the challenge is the light electricity. The water is not functioning for some years now. So the, the people that dig privately they are selling it. That is the one people we buy, but the, the one the project that they did the thing is not functioning. A visit by the EYF brought some fresh air and liveliness. They came with medications, clothing, food, evangelism, counseling. Lord will give you the answer that is expected. I is thanking the the church that has see the need to come and make an event like this for the development of the community. Everybody is happy. I'm happy. The villagers, even the villager was here to take his, uh, the, the check came and everybody can see I'm happy because it makes me to feel and the community to know that yes, there is something happening and that people of this church love them. They also remember the Anglican church situated in this community, gifting them with generating set food and orders. We want you to really carry this message to them that we love them and we care for them. We saw the dwellers and men looking at them, one could um, easily um, accept that they really need help. So that was what um, informed us in coming to Yemotu. Um, as youths of the diocese, we are committed to um, visiting the rural communities to share the word of Christ and provide help as much as we can, um, but it can never be enough. We need partnership. As you can see, for this particular um, outreach, we are partnering with the uh, CBN Africa. We also have the Christian Medical and Dental Association in F FCT. So they have come to identify with us, to partner with us, knowing fully well that we cannot do it all. And especially as youths, you will agree with me that we have the energy but uh, and unfortunately we lack we we, we have limited um, resources so we at the same time are calling to the um, to individuals to the public to NGOs to the church as a whole to support us bible enjoins us to go out into the world and make it disciples of all nations we should spread the gospel to all the ends of the earth but first you have to show people love by meeting their needs we as the Anglican Youth Fellowship Diocese of Abuja, we have come out to Yimitu village to attend to certain needs in terms of um, giving medical care, in terms of giving clothes, giving food, also preaching the word of God to them. So I think this will go a long way as we have shown the love of Christ to them. We would also do a follow-up and come back to see certain needs that we can meet, meet in this area and see how the work of God can be expanded. We thank you for helping us with some drugs and then care us from some, so many germs that come to us. 
ba muna ce maka mun gode ba mai sarki wanda sun zo nan ubaka tafi da su lafiya magani da zamu sha kuma yayi mana aiki a cikin sunanka i want to thank god for these people as they come for treatment for people many people they are dining in the house in the hospital because lack of money but god has touched their mind to come and help us for healing people for giving drugs for the medicine that we are taking it we want to tell god thank you may god protect them and guide them and make everything possible for them in this life charles philip wakolam acnn tv news Christians have been admonished to hold on to God, no matter the situations or challenges of life, because God is never late, but he's always on time. This was the position of Evangelist Oludari during his sermon at the recently concluded revival program of St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Maitama Abuja, with the theme, Joy in the Holy Ghost. According to the preacher, God may not show up when he is expected, stressing that God is never late. Satan will hit you most where it will hurt you. Why? Only daughter of Jairus. Okay. To what you are going through, he knows that that is precious to you. I think it's Job that I want. The Bible says, Job said, what I feared most, come upon me. What I dread most has come upon me. He said, I was not in safety. Yes, trouble comes. So, the problem you are going through, and it could be financial, it could be marriage, it could, he knows that is what is precious to you. It happens to me. Jesus may not come at your time, but he will never come late. Amen. At the time you expected, he may not arrive at the time you expected, but definitely he will never come late. The revival program featured prayers, praise and worship, words of wisdom and knowledge. It was also a time for thanksgiving the Most High God for the privilege of life for provision thus far he has led them through the year. Speaking on the theme of the program during an interview after the service, the vicar of the church, the Venerable Emmanuel Otoki, urged Christians to always rejoice in the Lord who is their hope. Joy is something that this world cannot give you. The joy of Jesus Christ is joy unspeakable, joy everlasting. Joy superlative. The joy that the world gives is not complete and is not permanent. When the world gives you joy, it's tainted with sorrow here and there. But the joy that Jesus Christ gives is the joy everlasting. It's the joy that cannot be tainted with any sorrow. And joy, this joy in the Holy Spirit is actually the expression of the kingdom of God. Because Romans chapter 14 verse 17 says, the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Most especially in this Christmas season, I will advise and counsel people, eat less, drink less, focus more on Jesus Christ, who is the supplier of joy. He said, all these things I have spoken with you before, that in me you may have peace. He said in the word, you have tribulation, he said, but give you a good share of overcome the world. To be of good share is to express joy from your heart. And Apostle Paul, even from prison yard, he had the joy of the Holy Ghost. From prison yard, he was writing the Philippian Christians. And he was telling them, saying, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. But if somebody is a prison yard today, people will be pitying him. He himself may be pitying himself. But because of the joy in the Holy Ghost, he was able to say, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. At the wake of the rebranding of Anglican Cable Network Nigeria to Advent Cable Nigeria, comments on social media, text messages and calls came to congratulate or query the reasons for the change of name. Of note in the queries were comments on why the name Anglican was changed to Advent. 
as some people fear that the church is trying to hide its identity. In response to the queries, the management has explained that to reach out to more audience in the world of different denominations and doctrines, most church television stations are not named after its owners. And he and this is verifiable as it is the case with most church TV stations. More details on this can be found on ecnntv.com. Meanwhile, during the dedication, rebranding and unveiling, the new head office of the station was named after the primate of all Nigeria, His Grace the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Oku. While the new state of the art studio was named after the Mr. and Mrs. Modupe and Florencio Alakija, the owners of Famfa Oil, in response to the honor, their representative for the day, Mrs. Mrs. Iyabo Olorutoba, sent their unreserved appreciation. We are grateful to God for the good works which we have all witnessed, and we commend everyone who has contributed to this laudable project. We consider ourselves quite privileged to be part of the station's success story, and we want to show our sincere appreciation to the decision makers for deeming it fit to name the studio after us. It is a great honor which we do not take for granted, even though it was not envisaged when we were making our decisions. It is very fulfilling to see how well ACNN is doing, particularly with regards to the social media engagements as we live in the perilous times. Promoting platforms such as this is one way we can contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. And we pray that the light of the TV station will continue to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Still to come after the break, Supreme Court affirms Sheyi Makinde as duly elected governor of Oyo State. Please stay tuned. By the power of the Almighty God, we render it known and void in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what that situation is. Maybe you have been threatened in your marriage. Receive your healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Watch out for prayer hour 12 noon every Friday. Welcome back. Thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. And to be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. President Muhammad Buhari has signed into law the 2020 Appropriation Act of 10.594 trillion naira. The signing ceremony held at the presidential villa in Abuja. It is the fourth time since 1999, but the earliest that the appropriation bill is signed in December, paving the way for the return of Nigeria to a January to December budget cycle. In his remarks, the president commended the patriotic zeal of the National Assembly for the quick passage of the budget and however informed the lawmakers that he looks forward to receiving the finance bill for assent in the shortest time. President Buhari therefore called on the ministries, departments and agencies to ensure the effective implementation of the 2020 budget and also directed that the 2021 budget estimates be submitted to the National Assembly by September next year. The Minister of State and Employment, Festus Keamu, has agreed with Atiku Abubakar, the former People Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate, over his reaction to the rejection of a bill seeking to provide for a single tenure of six years for president and governors. It was reported that the bill also seeks to provide an unlimited term of six years for members of the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly. Atiku, in a statement released by his special advisor on media, Paul Ibe, expressed disappointment over the rejection of the bill. According to him, the rejection of the bill was a mistake because little attention was paid to its merits. Reacting to the development, Festus Keamo, in a tweet on his official Twitter page,
Quote, at last, finally, we can find a common ground for agreement between the actors of the two major parties. I agree with these, and I know most of my party members do too. So, parliamentarians, please, let's do it with a clear provision that the present president and governors will not benefit. End of quote. The senator that represented Kaduna Central in the 8th Senate, Comrade Shehu Sani, has challenged President Muhammad Buhari to address the issues raised by some Nigerians that his government is dominated by Northerners and Muslims. Sani, who is also the executive director of African Center for Peace and Development, confronted President Buhari while receiving the members of Bishara Baptist Church, led by Reverend Joel Johanna in his residence in Kaduna, where they presented a book titled 77 Years Silent Exploit in Northern Nigeria, the untold story of Bishara Baptist Church from 1948 to 2019 to the lawmaker. He also challenged President Buhari to address issues raised by Northerners that his government is only interested in executing projects in Southern Nigeria. He called on Northern leaders to as a matter of urgency, convey a conference to unite people of all religions and be sincere to themselves on their discussions on the way forward for the Northern region, as well as on the need to go back to Sa Amadou Bello, the Sedona of Sokoto's philosophy of peace and unity. The Supreme Court has upheld Sheyi Makinde's election as governor of Oyo State. The appeal was filed by the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Adebayo Adelabu. Adelabu lost to Makinde during the March 9, 2019 elections. Adelabu had approached the Supreme Court to challenge the appeal court ruling. The appellate court, after evaluating the evidence brought by Oyo APC and its candidate, ruled that the status quo should be maintained. And now to the international scene. The world's biggest smartphone and chip maker Samsung Electronics has issued a rare apology after its chairman was jailed for sabotaging union activities. Chairman Lee shang hyun and Executive Vice President Gang Yung Hung were both jailed for 18 months for leading a wild ranging operation to deter staff at Samsung Customer Service Unit operating a union. Samsung Electronics is the flagship subsidiary of the Samsung Group, by far the biggest of the family controlled conglomerate known as Kyle Bowles, that have propelled South Korea's rise to the world's 11th largest economy. Along the way, it has fought ferociously against union representation until local authorities in Suwon, where it is headquartered last month, certified the National Samsung Electronics Union, which is affiliated to a powerful umbrella group. Lee and Kang were found guilty of violating labor union laws, with prosecutors saying they had ordered subordinates to court union members wages and discover and exploit details of their personal lives such as pregnancies and death among other tactics. Google agreed to pay Australian tax authorities 327 million US dollars to settle a long-running dispute over the tech giant's multi-billion dollar business in the country. The Australian tax office said the payment covered taxes owed for 2008 to 2018 and brought to 1.25 billion Australia dollars. The amount recovered from global e-commerce titans including Microsoft, Apple and Facebook. The Australian tax office launched its crackdown on multinational companies accounting practices in 2016 with the adoption of an anti-tax avoidance law and the launch of the tax force. Konza said that the ATO's operation will be extended until 2023 to ensure multinational digital players continue to pay taxes on sales revenue from Australian customers. On a night when Liverpool's next generation hoped to show their readiness for regular action at this level, Aston Villa's 30-year-old striker Jonathan Kojia seized his chance to make a similar claim by playing 
a major part in Kono Horihen's opening goal before scoring to himself. That how, along with an own goal by Morgan Boys, and a place in the Carabao Cup semi-final for Villa and taught Liverpool's young star a lesson about the merciless reality of senior football. Wesley rammed the point home by making it 5-0 in stoppage time. Lever to test the keeper and he's got side when this ball was kicked. Although he didn't get a touch. The Kodja made the run and he's found him. And it's taken a deflection which is completely keeper. And it takes that kind of deflection. Quavine Kelleher, that is with the middle for Elliot. Broken here for Jonathan Kodja who's got a man to his left, but he's only got eyes for the goal. In the middle of the park. And they're on to it. His goal that one is Jonathan Davis looking to his goal. Let's keep his low. But Potter has taken it up, looks for El Mohamedi, and there's another Ergen after that. It's a simple finish for Kodja. And that is it on the news on the air from the Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. Thank you for watching. I am Rachel Ibunu.